Number 10 then, from the 2006 Higher Maths Paper 1, a log question. A log question in that it involves an equation with either an unknown or variable powers, and logs are powers. Now notice in this one, there's only one unknown in this equation, remembering x and y are variables. A is the constant in the equation. X is the independent variable in that it can run through taking any value, values it like. But once you've settled on a value of X, there's only one value of Y that corresponds to it. You could have had a harder question where instead of the simple exponential, it was the general exponential equation, some multiple of A to the power X. Now you would have two unknown constants. In order to find two unknowns, you would need two equations. So you'd need two pairs of values, two points. There you go. However, here it's easy because there's only one unknown. That means I need one pair of values, one point on this graph. Notice there are actually two points, though. There's this point, zero, zero. However, that's no use to you because if x is zero, anything to the power of zero is one, in which case you lose a. doesn't matter what a is. Anything to the power of zero would be one. So this is the point you're going to use. Now the mark scheme gives about, I think it's four different alternatives. There's really just two ways to do this. One way is basically ignoring that graph and just do what you would normally do, substitute in values to find the unknown. It's just there's two ways you can substitute those values in. You could use the raw figures, being careful about what they actually stand for. The other way of doing it is to acknowledge this graph as a straight line and use the equation of the straight line to turn back into this form. We'll do the substitutions first. So, 6 is the horizontal coordinate and that's an x, so that's fine. x is 6. However, the 3, which is the vertical coordinate, isn't y. That's log 4y. So you've got to decide what you're going to do now. Will I turn this equation into an equation that says log 4y equals, and then I can put 3 in place of it, or will I just leave it like this and change that 3 back into a y? That's their two choices. If I want to do a straight substitution of x and y, then I could do this. I can say, well, x is 6, but it's not y that's 3, it's log 4 of y that's 3, which means that y itself will be carry out the inverse of logarithm base 4, which is the exponential 4 to the power, 4 to the power 3, and substitute those values in. So you've got 4 to the power 3 is a to the power 6. Now 4 to the power 3 is paper 1, so you could just do it in your fingers, wouldn't you? 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. So you've got 64 is some number to the power 6, which means that a is going to be the sixth root of 64. Now, it is paper one, so it must be a nice number then. And hopefully you'd realise you've got powers of two there. Two to the power six is 64. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. Which means that A equals two. So I missed the marks out completely here. The marking for this would be then realising that the log is 3, that gives you a mark, according to Martin's scheme, and that then, changing it into y, gives you 4 to the 3. Then, substituting it into the equation gives you this, and solving it for a finally gives you a. So there's one of the direct substitution methods. Perhaps not your first choice, because the second way would actually be a bit neater. And that's to substitute just the 6 of the 3 into an appropriate equation. So, a better method then, recognising you've got logs involved, isn't to try a direct substitution into the original equation, but to adapt the original equation to involve the correct number forms. So since this has got x's, I'll leave x alone, but I want log 4's of y, so I need to turn that into a log 4 of y. So that means I'll have to make, take log 4 of y of that side, but I'll also have to take log 4 of y of the other side. And then I could do one further thing, that x, now that I've got a log, that x can pop out. So log 4 of y equals x times log 4 of a. Now, marks again. Taking logs of both sides 
would be one mark and then that's what it varies between the methods because there's another method they've stated which involves considering the form of the graph which gives a mark for this but if you're doing it the substitution way there's no mark for that it's a little bit inconsistent there now the next step is just to substitute in the values so this says when x is 6 so that means I've got 6 log 4 of a remember log 4 of a is just a number there's only the one unknown log 4 of y which is the vertical component is 3 that's worth a mark now taking that across and dividing in other words you're just starting to solve it for a now to get to a there's two things you need to do get rid of that 6 and get rid of that operation log 4 log base 4 First of all, getting rid of the 6 means dividing by 6. So taking the 6 across and dividing would be 3 over 6, which is just a half. And then finally, and it gives you a mark for that, and then finally, to get A itself, now get rid of the log base 4. So take that across and do the opposite, which is a 4 to the power a half. And from that, you're going to get A equals, remember, power a half is square root, square root of 4, 2. And that's the final mark. So those two methods were essentially the same in that I'm not really considering the graph. The only purpose of that graph was to give me these two numbers. I was either doing a direct substitution for x and y to find the only remaining unknown, or I manipulated the equation to get it in the form of the two variables to make it look like x's and log y's. So I could then substitute those two numbers in. Essentially, they were both substitute numbers in here to find the unknown. Now, the other method is to consider this graph. So, for the graph, notice this is a simple form of an exponential. There's no multiplying constant. And in this graph, it goes through the origin. That means that this graph has got a simple form. That graph looks like y equals mx. Just using a capital Y to stand for the vertical coordinate and x to stand for the horizontal one. Now, just replacing these three parts should give me this equation once I've changed it back again. Now, what is the vertical coordinate here? That's log 4. Log 4 of y, that's the vertical coordinate, equals m times... Now, what is the gradient of this graph? Well, the gradient is the distance up over the distance along. It's 6 along and 3 up. The gradient of that would be 3 upon 6 which is a half. So that means it equals a half of, now what is the horizontal coordinate? That's an x. Now, doing it this way, this part here, well, translated into the numbers, this part here would be worth a mark. Getting the gradient would be worth a mark. But in the marking scheme, if you don't do any explanation and just look at that graph and write m equals a half, for some reason you get no marks at all if you don't write anything else. So there's two marks for getting to there. Now notice, I'm not. this is different from the other technique because I'm using the form of this equation. I'm not actually substituting in for x and y in this case. I'm taking the form of that, which is y equals mx, as in vertical equals m times horizontal, and working out the gradient. Now the next step here would be just rearrange that back into the original form. In other words, make it read y equals. Well, in that case, y is going to be removing the operation log base 4. The other side will be the inverse of that, which is 4 to the power. It'll be 4 to the power, a half x. That will now lift up as the power. The log is the power. That gives you the third mark. And now you've got to sort this out. If I bracket that, then I've got 4 to the power, a half, which means you've got square root of 4 is, so it's 2 to the power x. However, the question did say, what's the value of A? So I have to finish off by saying, which means that A is a 2. And there's your fourth mark.